Have you ever noticed how some editors just churn out color grades faster than you could sip your coffee? Well, here's their secret. It's Power Grades and DaVinci Resolve. In this video, we're gonna dive into how to use Power Grades, how they save you time, how they make you look like a pro, and spoiler alert, why using multiple databases to store your projects can totally mess this up if you're not careful. Let's get into it. So let me paint you a picture here, okay? You've just spent hours, and I mean hours, crafting the perfect look for your color grade. You're happy, the client's happy, and your cat is indifferent. A week later, you're looking at a new timeline thinking, didn't I already nail this look? Well, enter Power Grades. Power Grades are DaVinci Resolve's secret weapon to saving you time when color grading. And today we're gonna break down how to set them up, how to use them, and what to avoid doing. So what exactly are Power Grades? Well, think of them as your personal color grading vault. You save your nodes, your adjustments, your tweaks, all into a power grade, and they're just waiting for you within any project that you open within the same database. And that last part is key. Power grades aren't some magical universal feature. They're magical, but not universal. They're database specific, which means if you save a power grade in one database, it's not gonna show up on the other. And that applies to local, network, or cloud-based projects. I'll show you how to handle that in a minute. So let's dive into how they work. So you see here on my timeline, I have some old footage from uh, an old tutorial I did. Let's jump into the color page. We're not interested in anything else here. So in the color page, if you come up here, you wanna make sure that your gallery is open, right? Uh, by default, you're gonna be open to stills. What you wanna do is jump to power grades here. Now, personally, I use power grades to set my look right for these videos every single time. So because I've already got this look that you've seen now done once, I'll never have to do it again because all I gotta do is just drag this on here and you'll see it populates with all of the nodes. Now, depending on shot to shot, I have to go through and change my my masking right here because sometimes the camera moves and I just have to change it. I've made my adjustment. I've warmed up my footage just a little bit, but once it's done, it's there. It's nice because you didn't have to rework the wheel to get this working. Wheel as in color wheel. So to save a power grade, let's say you have this looking exactly like you want it. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna make sure you're in your power grades folder, right click on your image and press grab still and it'll automatically insert itself in here. And that's all you gotta do. It's really easy and the next time you have your clip, you just drag it on over and that's it. But pro tip, keep your power grades organized. So you see here, power grades one for me is YouTube related videos. So I have different looks for different sort of things and all of those looks live within power grade one. My power grades two folder is a CinePrint 35. Uh, it's a series of power grades designed to emulate specific film stocks filmed on different digital cameras used for very specific things, not in relation to this, but all the ones I use for YouTube are saved right here. It's just an organization thing. If you want to make a new folder, all you literally have to do is just right click, add power grade album, and there you have another power grade album and you can rename it just by double clicking on it. That's it. I don't need this one, so I'm going to delete it. Now, going back to that problem I was telling you about where they don't carry over between different libraries, there's a workaround for that. You could still move different power grades to different libraries if you want. Here's how to do it. In your power grades folder, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna right click on the power grade, press export, and make sure you choose DPX files right here. Okay, I'm gonna save this to my downloads just for example's sake. This is still 25116.dpx, export this. So now, let's say you're in a different library now, uh, within a different database and you want to import it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your Power Grades folder, right click, press import, find it in your downloads, find the DPX, not the DRX, DPX file, click that, import it, and bam, there you go. And there you have it, Power Grades aren't just a time saver, they're a sanity saver. Whether you're color grading like a big blockbuster short film, or you're just trying to get like your vlog to look a little less meh, Power grades really can help you work smarter and not harder. Just remember that database catch though, that threw me for a loop the first time I uh, encountered that problem. But yeah, remember that and you'll be golden or teal or whatever color grade you're into. So if this video saved you some headaches, hit that like button. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. The channel is growing like a wildfire lately. It's been going crazy and I'd love to have you along for the ride if this is the first video you've seen from this channel. Yeah, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any power grade related questions and I'll get back to you like ASAP. And until next time, happy color grading.